a regenerative gas turbine operates at steady state. Well, what do they mean by regenerative gas turbine? Make a sketch of a traditional turbine. So you have a compressor, then a combustor, or what I'll call a burner, then come out to a turbine, and then you have a heat exchanger in which you close the loop, and that would be the standard Brayton cycle. So state one, state two, state three, and state four. And then what they notice is, is the temperature at four is quite high. And all you're doing is throwing that out, Q out. So what the what the goal would be to say, well, why don't I try to use some of this high temperature exhaust gases instead of just disposing it to the atmosphere, wouldn't it be better to try to heat up some of the gases that would be heated by burning a precious fuel in the burner? So try to heat up from two to some other state before it goes into the burner to reduce the amount of heat cooling or not cooling, heating that's done in the burner. That's the goal of the regenerative uh, regenerative gas turbine cycle. So what they do is they say, well, let's reroute. So we'll take the exhaust gases out of the turbine, come up and put them through a heat exchanger. And the heat exchanger, the purpose of that heat exchanger is to preheat the gases before they get into the burner. Now, so what we do is we get rid of down here, get rid of this, get that out of the way, and we still have to close the loop, so we bring it over and come down and then go into the compressor. But before we put it into the compressor, that regenerative heat exchanger heat exchanger doesn't cool it down enough so you'll still have to have another heat exchanger just like you did down here to uh, reject some heat to the ambient atmosphere so this is Q out all right so let's take a look you still have Q in in the burner you still have Q out for a heat exchanger over here you still have the work coming out of the turbine and you still have the work driving the compressor. But this added regenerative heat exchanger, okay, what does it change? Does it change the work of the compressor? No. Does it change the work of the turbine? No, because often this, this temperature going into the turbine, this T3 is T max. That's your maximum temperature. Don't change your maximum temperature. This regenerative heat exchanger doesn't change the maximum temperature. So it doesn't change WC or WT. What it does is it reduces QN. QN is smaller because you're getting it heated up from two. And now here's a, a, a little bit of a challenge. When it comes out of the turbine, they stay with state four right here. But they didn't want to reorder the numbering system, leave one right here. So what they do in the textbook is they call this state X and this state Y. So uh, it goes from 2 to X before it goes into the burner, and it goes from 4 to Y before it goes to the other heat exchanger to reject the heat. So uh, I, I'm not in favor of the use of X and Y for states. Usually use states as one, two, three, four integer numbers, but here you go, staying consistent with the textbook. Is there any pressure loss in the heat exchanger? No. You do have a high pressure side because it's high pressure at state two, X, and three, and the low pressure side, it's low pressure at one, Y, and four. But that's a regenerative. Uh, gas turbine. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and look at it on a temperature entropy diagram. So we have the temperature entropy diagram. We we'll start at state one, go through compression to state two, and now you have constant pressure heat addition. Okay, 
and you're going to go up all the way to state three. Then you would expand down, and that doesn't look too well, does it? I need to put these closer together, sorry. Let me put one, like that, expand down. So what we see is state four is very high temperature. So what we want to do is we want to cool some of the exhaust gases off while heating some of the from state two up to state X. And this is cooled down to state Y. Okay. Now, if you have a uh, counterflow heat exchanger, which is common, and you have the hot side on one and the cold side on the other, they're both air in this case. This comes in at state two. This goes out at state X. This comes in at state four. This goes out at state Y. You might ask yourself, the temperature at Y is going to be less than the temperature at 4. The hot fluid is going to lose or decrease in temperature. It will be heat transfer out of the hot fluid into the cold fluid. And the cold fluid is going to heat up. But how high or how low could Y be? And likewise, how high could X be? And a lot of times they'll plot... Uh, uh, like on a temperature kind of scale X from one side of the heat exchanger to the other side of the heat exchanger. They'll show the cold fluid heating up going from T2 to Tx and the hot fluid, hot fluid coming down and because they have the same mass flow rate those slopes of those lines assuming constant specific heats would be exactly the same. They'd be parallel lines and then this would be T4, and this would be Ty. Well, if you make the heat exchanger larger, it's uh, kind of like trying to stretch out the length here. I know this is not going to be a great illustration, but if I wanted to do this, make it longer, and so now I'm bringing in 4 over here and taking out Y over here, I'm bringing in 2 over here, and taking out X over here. And if I put my same temperature length diagram from inlet and outlet, so the, the, the T2 is not changing on the magnitude, and T4 isn't changing on the magnitude, right? T4, it's the same height. But what you can find is that the slopes will be just like this and the difference will be coming smaller and smaller and smaller delta T. And if you have a, a short stubby heat exchanger, not very much area, it'll be a large delta T within the heat exchanger. And this delta T right here, you know, that's what I'm talking about. So, so theory the, the exit temperature for the hot could be as low as T2, the inlet temperature of the cold. And the exit temperature of the cold could be as high as T4, the inlet temperature of the hot. That's a tongue twister, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what they do is, is this could go as high as 4. This could go as low as... Y could go as low as 2. That's so, an ideal, an ideal situation, that's right. So what we do is you have the efficiency or the effectiveness, this book calls it the effectiveness, of that regenerative heat exchanger. They use a symbol like eta, R-E-G. So it's the regenerative heat exchanger effectiveness. And they say, look, the actual amount of transfer, well, you could do it from the perspective of the cold fluid being heated up. It would be it would be going out from H2 to HX. That's how much increase in the enthalpy of the cold fluid. Compared to the maximum increase of the cold fluid, 
Well, it could go as high as H4 on the exit. If you had specific constant specific heats, it would be Tx minus T2 divided by T4 minus T2. And often this is specified. Maybe it said, oh, it's 80% is the regenerate, uh, regenerative heat exchanger effectiveness. All right, so there you go. We've now uh, covered the theory um, to now analyze this problem. So let's take a look at, at this problem right here, having covered the theory. So what they're saying is the inlet to the compressor is 100 kPa and 300 Kelvin. They're fixing T1 and they're fixing P1. Whoops, P1. The pressure ratio is 11. So P2 divided by P1 is fixed to be 11. The inlet to the turbine is 1400 Kelvin. So this T3 is 1400 Kelvin. This is typical in, in type of information specified. The isentropic efficiency of the compressor and turbine are 100%, so they're reversible. And the regenerator effectiveness is 50%, so they're specifying this eta regenerator to be 50% for this problem. Now they ask, go ahead and determine the thermal efficiency and the back work ratio. So what I do is um, if you assume cold, it doesn't say to assume cold air standard or consider use the air tables accounting for variable specific heats. You, it's your choice. You can go one way or the other. It, it, doesn't, it's, it doesn't appear to be specified in this problem. But, but you can think of this, this X is because the 50% effect, effectiveness is being halfway between T2 and T4. Just halfway. Maybe I sketched it showing it's about a 50%. And likewise, Y will be about 50%. In that case, um, the exit temperature Tx is equal to the exit temperature uh, Ty. But, but, um, but they're coming out at different ends. Okay, because here you're picking up half. It's giving up half of what it could.